Yo, 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 what's up? It's your boy, L.A. Waters, and welcome to another episode of LACC TV. I hope everyone brought their appetites because tonight we've got a super cheesy episode of Cheap Eats. Now, I'm always looking for a creative way to spice up dinner on a budget. Tonight, we got to look up. This episode is going to be super exciting for one reason and one reason only. Cheese! I mean, because who doesn't love cheese? Cheese is everything. And tonight, our guest chef, Chef Tyler is giving us old-fashioned grilled cheeses of our past, all right? I don't know about you guys, but grilled cheeses are super nostalgic for me. You know, grilled cheese, tomato soup, whatever it is, it's awesome. So I hope you guys at home are hungry. I hope your stoves are hot. Chef Tyler, take us away, man. Thank you, LA. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. Of course, of course. Yeah. Today, I'm going to take you through some of my favorite grilled cheese sandwiches. You are all right with that? I'm going to start with uh, what I lovingly call the classic. So if you're making grilled cheese, you're going to want to get your, um, first, wash your hands. You are cooking, and uh, foodborne illnesses is a thing. Tip Next, you're, you're, you're going to want to get your uh, equipment. You're going to want to get a, an electric griddle or a, uh, or a frying pan for the stove, <laughs> whatever you prefer. You're going to want to get a spatula for flipping. You're going to want to get a sharp knife for cutting your sandwiches, if that's your thing. And you're going to want to get, we're going to start with, a butter knife. That goes with the butter. You want your butter softened. That makes it easier to spread. So for the classic, you're going to need these particular ingredients. You're going to need white bread. You're going to need softened butter. And you're going to need American cheese. Delicious, pasteurized, processed American cheese. <laughs> I love the air quotes. It's fabulous. So let's get started. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take a health, hefty serving of butter, and you're going to spread it around your white bread. Make sure you get butter in every crevice and crease, to every edge, to every corner. You're going to want all of your grilled cheese sandwich to be ready. And once you get it nice and buttered, you're going to want to toss it on your nice, warmed electric griddle. I have mine set to about medium heat. Uh, if, you, if you need your grilled cheese quicker than that, feel free to bring it up higher. Just know that you're going to run the risk of burning your grilled cheese sandwich. No. Get both sides of your, uh, get both slices of the bread completely covered in butter. More butter, more butter. More butter, more butter, exactly. But only one side. You don't want, you don't need butter on both sides. You're going to have Different sorts of dairy. So that's a that's got to be a rookie mistake. Butter on both sides of the bread. It's I mean, it'll still taste good. It's just not that. <laughs> so your cheese is going to come plastic wrapped. Each individual slice plastic wrapped. I don't know if that says something about the product, but uh, anyway, if you want to take it, you want to break it up in various slices. To make sure you get every little inch. That white bread covered in that delicious American cheese. And you want to do it on both sides just to make sure that you get all the cheese that you desperately need. Mo butter, mo cheese. You don't, you don't want to bite into a sandwich and have there be a chunk that's just bread. Yeah, no, that's gross. You got to have, it's got to be all melty and gooey. It's got to be. You get that started, you get that going, and you let that sit there, melt, melt through the bread. The heat will go up through the bread, cook with that, uh, cook with the butter, and turn the uh, the bread nice and golden brown. And the heat will continue to rise and get to that cheese, to make it nice and melty. Now adjust it, move it around, make sure each piece of uh, each piece of that bread is receiving the heat that it needs. And then periodically, check on the underside to see that your uh, your bread is getting nice and golden brown. You know? Mine's already there. So once you're ready, what you're going to want to do is get ready for your flip. You want to get your spatula under one side, make sure it's nice and lined up the way the bread should be, and then go for it. 
Oh, awesome flipping skills. Beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> As you can see, I got a nice golden brown that's started. I prefer a little more crunchy, crispy golden brown, so I want to keep it on there just a little bit longer. Check the other side. That will look nice, too. I'm going to let that sit there right in the middle of the heat and get a nice crispiness to it. Get some uh, room set when I want to cut it here in a minute. Uh, for a classic, I like to have a cut classic for the cheese. Yeah, you got to cut it. You got to. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, that's looking nice. That's looking nice. I think it's great. Cut. Put that mm -hmm. on a nice cuttable surface, a cutting board. Get your knife ready. Cut it down the middle. I prefer diagonal for what you're, you're about. Look at that oh. goo. Look at it. Oh, and there you go. <laughs> nice, gooey, melty, delicious, classic grilled cheese sandwich. Wow. I mean, I don't know about anybody else out there watching, but that was the best trip down memory lane I think I've had all week. Thank you, Chef. Like, that was awesome. Let's not tell Grandma that your sandwich looks better than hers, okay? We're not, we're not going to tell Grandma. Too tough. Too tough. All right. Uh, can you do me a favor and tell the audience at home how big of a dent this may or may not put in their wallets? The classic? Oh, not at all. The, 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 the classic will, uh, is uh, very crunchy. Your standard loaf of white bread is going to run you about $1.25 at your local grocery store. Awesome. And a pack of pasteurized American cheese. You can get a uh, name brand Kraft that will run you 2 to $3. You can get store brand that will Probably knock about a, another dollar off that total price. And then for butter, you need to get probably a, a tub or a couple of sticks that'll run you between two and three dollars. For your total, three dollar like dollars. Seventy bucks. That's awesome. That's I. I don't know about anybody else, but that sounds like music to my ears. You know, I, I don't know about about you tyler but back when i was in college you know you had to make 20 bucks stretch and a loaf of bread some cheese and some butter and you got lunch all week i mean i don't know about you hey it's 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 perfect you get you get about a dozen sandwiches and in, in one purchase and that'll, that'll keep you going for a long time <laughs> that's awesome can you give our fans at home a little bit of uh just background how you got all this awesome knowledge of cheese like you know the cheese aisle for you must be a breeze at the grocery store Oh, it's not a breeze. There are so many options in the in the aisle at the grocery store. How, how it's impossible to pick which one you want for your grilled cheese and get them. You got to real, be real busy. But in terms of my uh, how I gained my knowledge, I worked in a lot of kitchens, okay. make a lot of grilled cheeses for people. I, I worked at a at a restaurant on Hollywood Boulevard, making thousands of grilled cheeses for thousands of sweaty tourists for quite a long time. Not sweaty tourists, though. Oh, man, those have got to be the worst kind. But uh, we definitely thank your uh, sacrifice in those uh, kitchens serving those thousands of sweaty tourists because this is the end result. Like, your grilled cheese knowledge is amazing. Now, I'm pretty sure you've got a second recipe for it. So let's jump right into that. Oh, absolutely. So for this next one is, uh, is, is my favorite. It's what I go for when I want proper grilled cheese, when I want one that's a meal and not a snack. It's classic, right? but it's, it's, it's a snack sandwich. So for this one, for a good meal sandwich, you're going to want, in my book, you're going to want sourdough bread, you're going to want Colby Jack cheese, and, of course, butter. Soft. All right. Now, uh, sourdough bread is quite a bit larger than your standard loaf of white. It's not square. Right? So that's going to come with some its own problems. But like it. All the same, you're going to want to cover that thing with all the butter, every nook and cranny. Every nook and cranny. Yeah. There are going to be pockets, little holes in the sourdough bread that are just going to fill up with butter. That might make you mad, but it's only going to make things better. Oh, that sounds amazing. Just pockets of butter. And I would recommend making sure you have both of them butter before you put, on the, uh, put it on the grill. Otherwise, you're going to have one that's a little more done than the other. Got it. Got it. So it sounds like the keys tonight are butter, both slices of bread, more butter, more cheese. I think Precise. This uh, more butter, more cheese. It's not a uh, a uh, sandwich for lactose intolerant, nor is it a sandwich built on a diet. It's uh, it tastes good for a reason. Gotta love the butter. Love All righty. So when you're nice and buttered up, toss it on your grill. 
It's nice and hot. You'll hear an immediate sizzle. Gotta love that. Get the sizzle, now, man. Gotta love it. Now, uh, sour bread will be flat on the bottom, so you want to take the, the straight edge, flat side of each sliced bread and line them up together. That'll be easier to make them uh, make them vary. Moving on to cheese. I like Colby Jack cheese for this sandwich. Got a nice blend of uh, two different types of cheeses and so many flavors. Now, mm -hmm. unless you want to go overboard on your cheese, which you are more than willing to do, you can use multiple slices of cheese for this large piece of bread, but cheese can be expensive. So what you can do is you can break up your squares of Colby Jack to better uh, cover your large slice of bread. And when the, uh, the meltedness comes together, all those pockets will end up being full of, uh, full of cheese from one side or the other. That's what, how you want to have it set up. And just hang out and uh, let that get that nice meltiness going. And periodically, you'll want to keep an eye on the other side. You just naturally look at it. Oh, that's that even begun. That's going to take a little bit of time. You just hang out. Just pockets of butter and pockets of cheese. Ooh, ooh, wee. I can't wait. This uh, the sourdough is a much denser bread than, okay. uh, than white. As such, it's going to, the heat is going to have a little more difficulty going through it and rising to the top. So if you want to increase the temperature just a bit more, you're welcome to do that. It, it will go faster, but you still run the risk of burning it if you don't pay attention. Or if you're just willing to hang out a little longer, it'll uh, your medium heat grid will we'll get you there. So I'm guessing all this knowledge of like which breads are denser, which ones retain more heat, et cetera, came from all this, uh, you know, serving of the grilled cheeses to the sweaty tourists. Oh, absolutely. Uh, in, in, the, in the restaurant business, the, uh, the standard bread for grilled cheese is a slice of Texas toast, which is a, oh. a very thick bread. It's, oh, it's oh, roughly the same density as Wonder Bread. As, as white bread, but it's a very large piece of it, so it takes a very long time for that uh, heat to get up there to the cheese. Oh, wow. You were just dropping so many gems today, Chef. So many. <laughs> so we're getting there with the meltiness. I'm checking to see how the, the toastiness is going. And the toastiness is very... The sizzle from here. About another 10, 15 seconds, and we'll be ready to flip this beauty. Oh, man. It looks delicious. Move it around a bit. Make sure you're finding the, the even heat spot on your griddle. It's, uh, it's helpful to flip it over before you start with the grill to find where the, the electrical grid goes on to know where the heat will be. It's, uh, it's it's quick thing yep. Do that before you turn it on, obviously. <laughs> Please, guys at home check before you turn the griddle on, all right? The last thing we need is a bunch of emails in the inbox about the griddle fails. I mean, it could be a good shout. I mean, never forget yeah. that. <laughs> We're good and toasty and ready to flip. Oh, we are excited. Let's see this flip. Ready. One, two, and three. Oh, folks, just look at that golden brown goodness oh man it looks so amazing Woo oh yeah i'm pretty sure yeah that first bite's gonna be amazing uh, amazing now check both sides make sure you got a nice brownness even both sides the way you like it and when you're ready toss it on a nice uh nice cutting surface grab your sharp knife and this one cuts right down the middle. Beautiful. Look at that. You want to stick that on the plate, serve it with some chips, some fries, or your favorite can of Warhol's favorite. That, that sounds, oh man, that looks so delicious. All right, guys, that is two down, and I hope everybody at home has been taking notes. These sandwiches have looked amazing, Chef, but I hope you didn't think we would bring you here for all work and no play. Tonight, guys, uh, if you're down, Chef, we got a quick game of trivia for you. Sure. And for the audience members at home, for those watching, we invite you guys to play along with us. Go ahead and just put your answers to these questions in the chat box. All righty. Chef, first question up. How many pounds of milk do you think it takes to make one pound of cheese? Huh. Uh, well, I, I know that... 
they take the cheese off the skim, so that's a fraction of the, the total milk. So I'm going to say one pound of cheese is five pounds of milk. Oh, almost. The answer is actually 10 pounds of milk, which uh, kind of blew my mind, but I guess it makes sense. You know, they're only taking the skin, blah, blah, blah. So that's a lot. And then, you know, you think about it quantitatively, and it's just like, Jesus, that's so much milk. All right, next question from the popular TV show 30 Rock. What is a cheesy blaster? Cheesy blaster? Doesn't everybody know that? Everyone knows. Everyone knows what meat that's in, right? You take a hot dog, I mean, you a like jack that. tea, you wrap it in a pizza, you've got cheesy blasters. Awesome. I love that, Chef. All right. And for the last one, she is known as the Queen of Cheese. Which one is she? They're kind of immature. I'm going to go with Baby Bell. That's a kind of cheese. Belt. Oh man, super close. It does start with a B. It is Brie cheese. Brie cheese. Known as the queen of cheese. Allison Brie is the queen. That's how I'll remember. Allison Brie cheese. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good, I like that. I like that. That'll work. Uh, thank you again to all of our audience members for playing at home. The producers have let me know that one lucky winner will be getting a gift card and a guest spot on LACC TV in the coming weeks. So chef, Thank you for playing. We appreciate you being a good sport. Uh, I believe you have one last recipe for us, sort of blow our minds. I most certainly do. This is uh, this is what I call my wild card grilled cheese. Oh, let's get into it. We're excited. Yeah, this is what I like to serve to uh, my vegetarian friends um, right. when, uh, when they want a Reuben, but because they're vegetarian, they don't uh, mess around with all that animal death. Also, it doesn't have uh, sauerkraut, but unless you're weird and germ, you don't want that. Yeah, because sauerkraut smells. Who wants that on sandwich? The ingredients for this is going to be two slices of rye bread, your standard softened butter, and the cheese that I use for this is Swiss. Swiss right. cheese. Uh, mo butter, mo cheese. I'm excited to see how you fold this Swiss cheese up. You. We'll have to hold on because uh, the butter comes first. I mean, duh, I know you're butter. excited. I mean, we, we, there, there are very important steps. I mean, you, you'll you can have a hot cheese sandwich and it will be okay, but without the without the butter, it's not a grilled cheese sandwich. You know, butter is is super important. I have always said you can never have too much butter. It's probably a doctor that disagrees with me, but eh. Yeah, what do they know? Eh, that's what I'm saying. So with all the, just like all the others, you want to get your butter all the way to the edges, all the way to the sides and the corners. Rye bread's a little rounded, so there are no corners, but you get the idea. Put them on the griddle just like the others. Listen to that nice sizzle. And get set up with your Swiss rolls. Now, Swiss has holes, and that, uh, that makes you think that there's going to be spots on your sandwich that are going to be devoid of cheese. But, uh, for this one, I like to overlook the cheese. I don't like there to be any question as to whether or not there will be enough cheese in this grilled cheese. I, I like to do four slices on my wild card rather than two. This Make is sure definitely mo butter, mo cheese. So with this, you may have a bit of cheese spilling over the edges, but uh, I'm willing to make a sacrifice for this particular time. You really need the... Uh, the presence of the Swiss cheese to offset the kind of bitterness of rye bread. Just uh, it, it, it's how it makes it work. All right. So keep an eye on the toastiness of the underside. Pick up your spatula, look on the underside. With the toastiness of rye bread, it is rye bread is a dark brown bread, usually. Right. Sometimes you get a Jewish rye like this that's a little lighter, but usually it's very dark brown bread. Sometimes it's even marbled, which really screws things up. Half of it's going to be dark, the other half is going to be not dark. But yeah, you have different 